Hi, I'm Bob Hagen, and welcome to The Bob Hagen Show, brought to you by It's Relevant. The goal of our show is to introduce you to the unsung heroes, movers and shakers, and key influencers in and around the various towns of Fairfield County. Enjoy the show. Today's topic is a very serious in nature. It's dementia and memory loss. And on the show, I'm glad to say I have an expert in that area, and that is Mary Underwood over at Maplewood Senior Living. Mary, your title is Corporate Director of Memory Care Services. And right away, to start off, we hear so much about it. What is dementia? Can you give us a definition for our listening audience? Dementia is a term we're hearing and seeing a lot more. Dementia is an umbrella term that describes a cluster of symptoms. Increased confusion, poor short-term memory, memory, poor decision-making. All those things are a cluster of symptoms, and it's an umbrella term. It's the actual diseases that cause the dementia that fall under that. Alzheimer's causes dementia. Lewy bodies causes dementia. Strokes cause this cluster of symptoms of dementia. So dementia is the umbrella overall term to describe the, the symptoms and the cluster of um, things that are happening with a person. The actual diagnosis is what causes that. And there's over 60 things that can cause, um, can cause dementia. Is there anything contributing to it that we're seeing mostly? Is it something that we're in the environment? Is it something out there? Is it, is it strictly age? Age is the greatest risk factor. Okay. Genetics plays a small factor in those who develop the disease <clears throat> in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. But generally, the people that we see and the people that are being diagnosed are older um, because age is the greatest risk factor. There's a lot of people doing research about environment, about diet, about a lot of different things that may cause it. But right now, what we know is that the greatest risk factor is age. What are some of the signs and for your loved ones, and, and what are pro proper steps to take? The problem is that the earlier signs of these diseases are also no what's considered normal aging. None of us run as fast as we did when we were younger. We're not as strong. We don't have as much muscle tone. Our vision declines, and also our memory declines. You know, remembering the name of an actor or a movie becomes a little more challenging as we get older. But also those signs of forgetfulness are also the first signs that there's something wrong. And, and is it a pattern? Are you looking for a... You're looking for a deterioration. You're looking for a decline. Um, you're looking for... But again, because it's progressive, oftentimes a person will show symptoms for two to three years before the family reaches out and has the person diagnosed or assessed that there might be something more serious wrong. You want to watch for the progression. You want to watch for the frequency. You want to see if it's impacting them socially and functionally. Um, so again, it's hard, it's hard to tell when is it disease process versus when is it normal aging. Forgetting the names of actors and movies is very normal. Forgetting the name of your neighbor who's been your neighbor for 30 years. Um, forgetting your first grandchild's name. Th that's not normal. Well, let me ask you this then. What is the difference between dementia and memory loss then? Is there really... Dementia is more than just memory loss. As it progresses, it becomes word recall. It becomes being able to process. It becomes difficulty with numbers and balancing checkbooks and, and sequencing. So it's not just memory but it's a lot of other things that happen as the disease progresses. You were also talking about a particular individual that happened tragically to walk off. One of the scariest words in dementia care is yet, Y-E-T. Nothing has happened yet. But what happens when that yet happens, oftentimes, unfortunately, it's a pretty significant event. There was a woman who was flying um, from Barbados to um, Washington, D.C. Family was waiting for her in the baggage area. and. Um, she had walked past the assistance that she was supposed to get, got disoriented, continued to walk, and the next day was found in the woods dead. Um, again, families don't think that those things are going to happen. They, they think mom's going to forget to take her pills or she's going to forget to eat. Thinking about judgment, decision making are things families often don't think about, and those are often the more dangerous aspects of the disease process. All right, so we're going to have people listening to the show, watching the show and their mind's going to get going, and they're going to start thinking about their loved ones. When is the right time to be proactive and start making decisions to maybe act to help that individual? The sooner the better, okay. um, which is obvious. But unfortunately, in our, in our industry and in our field, we don't see a lot of people doing things early. Um, but as soon as there's any sort of forgetfulness or memory loss, 
have the conversation with them, ask to go to the doctor's appointment with them. Um, because not everything, of those 60 things that cause dementia, some of them are fixable. Um, most are not, but some are. Um, my father-in-law was having memory issues for almost two years um, before we were able to get him to the doctor. We get him to the doctor and what we realized is he was taking Benadryl every night to help him sleep. Benadryl decreases a chemical in your brain which helps with memory. He, was taken, he stopped taking the Benadryl and within two weeks he was able to recall most things and his memory was back to normal. Yeah, but I, the, the, the challenge I would see is how do you go to a loved one and tell them they're losing their memory, they're not acting the same? Are they, do, do you do that, um, do you do that individually? Should you, should you have, like you said, should you have a, uh, I don't know, should you have an intervention with an expert? You deal with the emotions of the situation and not the fact. Um, to go to a loved one and say, you're forgetting things, you're making bad decisions, if anybody came at me like that, I would be very defensive myself. But to go with them and say, you know what, Mom, I'm worried about you. I'm concerned that there's things that I'm noticing that are making me anxious. Have you noticed anything that might be happening? Uh, it has to be a very non-threatening okay. situation. They have to still have control. Um, but again, if you go with all the facts of everything they're doing wrong, it is going to be challenging. But to say, I'm worried, I'm concerned, let's see what we can do together, if you make it a partnership, then it's more likely to get the person to the doctor. But there's also things that need to be discussed about, you know, mom, if you're ever in a place where you can't make your own decisions, mm -hmm. who would you want to do that for? You need to make sure the power of attorney um, and all the legal aspects are in place, the finances, that names are on accounts, um, and to have the conversation when the person's still early in the disease process, and ideally the conversation is, should happen before our parents or spouses even get sick. Um, to say, what do you want down the road? Do you want to live with one of your children? Do you, what is it that you would want to do? I had the conversation with my dad many years ago, doing what I do for a living. He knows that there is a concern of what's going to happen to him. Um, and he was not sick. He still is not sick. He's very healthy. He still works and he still drives. But everything is in place that in the event that something were to happen, that the legal is in place, I know exactly what it is that he wants if he's in a position not to tell me what he wants. Take me down the path then, Mary. Um, I have someone, hypothetically, let's say, that I'm starting to see the signs. Can I pick up the phone if I'm watching this and, and give you a call? Confident? What's, what's the best way to go about that? Absolutely. There's, okay. there's so many services. You know, I, we are absolutely available to anybody looking for information. Um, we, it's all confidential. It's all, we are a senior living community, but we're also a resource to those in the community. Um, the best way to reach me is at our corporate office, 203-557-4777. Um, um, I know we're a technology, you know, decade, agency, you know, sure. age group. So if anybody wants to email me at M, the, yeah, yep, sure. M Underwood at Maplewood SL.com. So again, it's M Underwood at Maplewood SL.com. And you can give them some feedback. Along we'll those give them lines. some direction, know the services that are in the area. Um, because there's so many, I've been doing this 24 years now. When I started 24 years ago, the choices really were nursing home or stay at home. Now there's home care agencies that specialize in it. There's adult day centers. The fact that there's a corporate director of memory care services shows that we've really come a long way in addressing the needs of those with memory loss. You're really springing up and, and you know, the, the facilities are beautiful. They're beautiful facilities. You know, it's it's sad to say that there's such a need for so much, um, so many apartments for people with memory care. But we are based out of Westport, but we have five communities throughout the state. Um, in this area, we're in Darien and Norwalk. We're also in Danbury, Newtown, and Orange. All our communities have different levels of memory care. Philosophically, what we believe is that we care for the human being first and we care for the disease second. So many, over the last 23 years, so much of the care has been focused on, are they showered, are they getting their meds, are they safe? We focus on, are they laughing? Are they making choices? Are they connecting emotionally still? Are they still being treated like the human beings that they are? And we put the disease on the back burner. Well, I think you are doing an unbelievable job up there. I've been up to your facilities in Nor Norwalk and Darien. 
and for the listening audience and viewing audience, if they ever want to take a tour and all that type of stuff, that's stuff that I know that you do. And I would encourage families just to reach out. There's people out there who understand the disease. They know what the services are. And as family members, when you're, it feels like you're slapped in the face when you're given a, you know, when there's a diagnosis of dementia, but there's really good people who really know what's available and want to help. What you guys are doing over at the Maplewood is unbelievable. And again, I cannot thank you enough for your expertise and just hoping that we could shed a little bit of light on some of the people out there that might be seeing some of these uh, symptoms and some of their family members. So thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure.